Rule Mass Challenge number 5. This is a holiday special as all these questions are taken from the next level of challenges so they should be a bit harder. For more information about these questions watch the beginning of challenge number 1. The basics are you're not allowed any calculating devices or measuring implements such as rulers or retractors. All you should need is a pencil and a piece of paper. As these questions are a bit harder after the pause I will give you some tips on how to approach them and then solutions. Warm-up tips. In the junior question, the key here is to realize this angle is x, or it could be called x, and this angle is 3x. These two sides are the same, and if you can work out what this angle is here, in terms of 3x, then you can find out x and therefore solve the question. Intermediate tip. The tip here is that 2 times 5 is 10. So if you, for every 0 on the end of a question, that comes from a 2 times a 5. So if you pair up the twos, powers of 2's and powers of 5's, that will get rid of most of the powers there, and you're left with what's necessary. And a tip for the senior warm-up is if you put the centre in here, and think about this in terms of a circle theorem, it should help you. The junior solution. So we have x and 3x here, so this angle in here, this angle in here, because this is a straight line, it's going to be 180 minus 3x. So the angles in this triangle add up to 180, so we've got 84 plus x plus 180 minus 3x equals 180. So trying to solve that, we have 84 x minus 3x is minus 2x, the 180's cancel give me 0, so we've got 84 equals 2x, so x equals 42. Now we're trying to find b, c, d, b to c to d, so this angle in here. Now we know x is 42, so 3x is going to be 126 that leaves these two angles, because this is isosceles, because of these two sides, these two angles are the same. So we've got 180 minus 126, which equals 54. And then we've got to half that to get each angle. So 54 divided by 2 is 27. Intermediate solution. So the 2 times 5 is 10 helps us, because if we pair up the 2s and the 5s, so we've got 2 to the power of 53, times 5 to the power of 53, that's going to give us 1 times, uh, 1 with, with lots and lots of zeros on the end, 53 zeros in fact. And what's left when we've taken that out, because we want the last non-zero digit, and that will come from what's left, is going to be 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 4. Now 3 to the power of 4 is 81, uh, 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27, 3 to the power of 4 is 81, and 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So when we multiply these two numbers together, we're going to end up with the last digit being 6 times 1. And 6 times 1 is 6, so the answer is D, which is 6. Senior warm-up question. Now once you have this tip about the circle theorem, this question becomes, I think, it becomes a lot easier. Um, is that actually making that stretch to, to put that point in there in the first place? Because once we have this idea, we know that this angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference, so that makes this 90 degrees. So we end up with a 90 degree triangle in here, so a right angle triangle, which allows us to use Pythagoras. Where we know these sides are the radius, which is 4. So we've got the two 4s, so this side, the hypotenuse, is 4 squared plus 4 squared square rooted. So that's the square root of 16 plus 16, which is 32. Now, which of those is equal to the square root of 32? Well, if we simplify this, what we call a third, by splitting it into a square number and what's left, so we've got square root of 16 times square root of 2. I think you can see where this is going. Square root of 16 is 4, and what's left is root 2, so that is C for root 2. Junior trick C solution from Raw Mass Challenge number 4. Now we're told that these uh, rectangles are all identical, so if we start labeling them up, if I call the long side A and the short side B, then we can see that these three B's are equal to these two A's, and this A plus B is 15. So I know that 3B 
equals 2a and I also know that a plus b equals 15. So to try and get some uh, numbers out of this, if I double this uh, a plus b, so I get 2a plus 2b equals 30 and I know that 2a equals 3b so this is quite a standard technique is to try and get rid of one of the variables so we've eliminated a by replacing it with b and then we know 5b equals 30 so b equals 6 and we want to work out the area so if we know what this length here is which is 3b is 18 then we can work out the area by doing 15 times 18. Now that looks pretty tricky but if we double the 15 to get 30 and half the 18 to get 9 that makes a much easier question. 9 threes are 27 with a 0 on the end, 270 which is A. Solution to the intermediate trick C from Raw Mass Challenge number 4. Okay so we are told the area of the small square is a quarter of the area of the whole square. All these rectangles are the same so let's start labeling it up. If I call the long side A and the short side B, and I've got A, B, A, B, A, B. Okay, this uh, length here is A minus this length here, which is B, so that's A minus B. Now, we're told that this square is a quarter of the whole square, so if I sort of redrew the whole square, then what would I would have is for those small squares inside there. So that a minus b must be this length here, which must be half of this whole length a plus b. So a minus b equals a half of a plus b. Now that tells us if we multiply this out that a minus b equals a half a plus a half b. Now if I simplify this, I take the the, the take of minus take away a half a from both sides, I've got a half a add the b to the other side, I've got one and a half b or three over two b now to get rid of the, the halves, so I multiply by two, I'll get a multiply this by two, I get three b, so a equals three b so the ratio of a to b, the long side to the short side is the long side is three times the short side so the ratio of the short side, well, it tells the long side, well, it's three times bigger, so that's a ratio of one to three, which is D. Senior Trixie solution from Raw Mass Challenge number four. Okay, so we've got eight identical octagons, all regular, all with side length one. So each one of these is a length one. Now, just looking at this, this diagram, I feel that we could... Uh, chop these corners off here, make a square here work out that area and then add on these triangles to make the area of the whole thing but first of all we've actually got to real figure out what these angles are in here but uh, as this is an octagon the external angle of an octagon here is 180 divided by 8 uh, which is 45. So that allows us to know that this angle here is 90 because we've got two external angles put together to make the 90 degrees and uh, makes these angles 90 so everything's nice and square. So from this triangle in here if I take that triangle out and draw a little bit bigger it's a right angle triangle one and one so the area is going to be a half of one times one which is a half. So each of these little triangles is a half, so that's two in total. Now looking at this square, if I can work out this length here, we've got one and one, and then this this part of this triangle. Okay, using Pythagoras, one squared plus one squared square rooted is the square root of two. So this diagonal, this hypotenuse, is the square root of two. So this length of the triangle is one plus one, which is two, plus the square root of 2, and obviously because it's square these are all going to be the same, so the area of that square is that squared. Uh, when I square this I've got 2 times 2 which is 4, 2 times root 2 plus root 2 times 2 which is 4 root 2, and root 2 squared which is 2, so that equals 6 plus 4 root 2, and we have the other 2 from the uh, triangles, so we've got 2 plus 6 plus 4 root 2 ok, so we've got 8 plus 4 root 2 
which is E. And finally, some new tricksy questions to keep you busy until next time. These are even trickier than normal, so I'll give you a few tips right at the end. Please feel free to post your thoughts on the solutions to these questions in the comments section. If you have found this video interesting, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you want to check your answers, subscribe to Raw Maths on YouTube so you can find out when I post the next video which will have the solutions to these questions. So until next time, good luck. Quick tips for these questions. First of all, this question, a lot of it is to do with labelling correctly, so it's anti-clockwise. So when you draw your squares, if you label them A, B, C, D, make sure it's going anti-clockwise, then label the next square from that one anti-clockwise. And the other thing is, it's, a lot of it is to do with isosceles triangles, so look for sides that are the same. So when you got uh, cut the squares out like that, these two sides are the same forming isosceles triangles. The tip for the intermediate, um, my only tip for this is to start by writing some numbers out. Obviously you realise you can't, the, the ones with zeros in give you nothing, um, but if you, if you just start with say the numbers from 111 all the way up to 119, that will give you an idea of something to do with this question. And I tip the last question, the senior question, is the key to this question, because these you've got to say these two are the same, we're trying to prove this is an I and this are the same. So we're trying to prove that that is an isosceles triangle. So if we can work out this angle and this angle and prove they're the same, then this makes this an isosceles triangle and therefore the sides are the same.